So the lens, we'll see more of it in the upcoming slides. Um, the lens is transparent, which means light goes through the lens, just like it goes through the cornea. Light can go through the lens, but the thing with the lens, it can change shape to focus. So lens will bulge or become fatter to focus on something closer and flatten or become skinnier, right, to focus on something farther. Uh, it's made of protein. Uh, if the lens starts clouding over or protein starts denaturing, well, then it's harder for light to get through, which was once transparent and now becoming less transparent. And that's what a, a cataract is, is uh, a cloudiness uh, of, the, of the lens. So when light enters the eye, the goal is to get that light to hit the retina where your rods and cones are located because those are the receptors sensitive to light which will send an action potential down the optic nerve right towards the brain. Um, but as light proceeds towards the retina, it bends along the way as it runs into different structures. The bending of the light rays is called refraction and we're going to go through the, the structures that cause the refraction or bending of light rays as they work their way towards the retina. All right, think of how objects look distorted when they're in water and you're, you're not in water. For example, if a spoon's in a glass of water, the spoon looks bent where it enters the water. Of course, we know the spoon isn't. So the same thing. So picture a ray of light or a photon of light going towards the eye. Its goal is to get to the retina in yellow here so the photoreceptors can, can respond to it. So as the light ray reaches the eye, what's the first structure it hits? That's the cornea. So the first refraction occurs at the cornea because it's much more dense than the air that the uh, ray of light or photon of light is uh, traveling on. So the first structure to refract light is the cornea, so you get some bending. Right, and then we enter this anterior chamber, and we know there's aqueous humor in there. Well, that's liquid, which is different than solid cornea. So you have refraction again, because we're moving from different densities of material. So the second refracted area is at the, as the light enters the aqueous humor. And then what's the next thing it's going to hit that's transparent? It's going to go through the pupil. That's just a hole. Um, then we reach this transparent structure. That's the lens. So now you're going to have more refraction at the lens because the lens is much more dense, right? It's a solid compared to aqueous humor, which is liquid. And light goes through the lens, and actually it all of a sudden leaves the lens and enters this transparent area, which is filled with this fluid, vitreous body, which is gel-like, different density than the, the lens, so you can have refraction again as it enters the vitreous body and then heads towards the retina. So those are your four structures that refract light uh, along the way as light enters the eye, proceeding all the way to the retina. I didn't mention on the previous slide, it's the cornea that bends light the most because of its dome shape. Um, so the cornea has the most refractive power, but the lens is special. We're just looking at the lens here because it can change how much it refracts light. So you can focus on something near or focus on something far. Uh, so that's the special refraction property of the lens that has the ability to change its refractive power, just like the autofocus right on your on your camera. So there's the lens, our transparent structure. You got ligaments kind of pulling it taut from all directions to flatten it. And the ligaments, of course, are attached to, to muscle. So this muscle could contract, making the hole smaller, which means the ligaments will get more lax. Or this muscle can relax and get larger, I'm exaggerating here, which is going to pull on the ligaments, which will pull on the lens to make it flatter. And that's how the lens can bulge and flatten to focus near and far. Our eyes are adapted for distant vision, so when we're looking at something far, those ciliary muscles, those circular muscles that we just saw are relaxed. When they're relaxed, that pulls on the suspensory ligaments, which flatten the lens for far vision. All right, so for 
distant vision, there's kind of what's happening. The mu ciliary muscles relax, which is opening up the whole. Remember, it's circular, but we're just looking at the top and bottom of the muscle uh, that surrounds the lens. Ciliary muscle relaxes. That pulls on these suspensory ligaments, which are also called ciliary zonules, which flatten the lens for far vision. Close vision would be the opposite. The ciliary muscles would contract, which would loosen the suspensory ligaments, bulging the uh, the lens. Um, here's this uh, slide here is explaining uh, well accommodation, which means that's the lens's ability to bend as you bring an object closer and closer to your eyes, and that's called accommodation. Uh, so as something is approximating or becoming closer to your eyes, eyes will have ability to bend to a certain point. You lose that ability as you age. Uh, which is called presbyopia. I think we see that on another, another slide. Um, so usually the younger you are, the more bendable or flexible your lens is to focus on something closer to your face. All right, so there it is. Accommodation, change the lens shape to increase refraction, right? Increase bending. Uh, that makes the lens bul more bulged. Um, of course, presbyopia is your uh, loss of accommodation as you age. Uh, Actually, we're not, not too worried about the next two. Let's go to the next slide. And here's what I mentioned earlier for close vision. The ciliary muscles constrict, which loosen. You can see how loose these suspensory ligaments are. That's also called ciliary zonules. And when that's loose, the lens will just kind of relax and bulge out, which makes it refract light more when it's, when it's more curved. Uh, and that's what happens during uh, close vision. Now we can have problems with refraction. Myopia, which is nearsightedness, hyperopia, which is farsightedness. I'll explain these with pictures on the upcoming slides. Um, it's astigmatism doesn't have a picture, but just think of unequal curvatures or malcurvatures, either on the cornea or lens, these two transparent structures. What if there's some kind of weird curve on it, which is not going to bend light in the correct direction? Well, that means you're going to have a blurry spot somewhere in your field of view, and that's what an astigmatism is. Here's a normal eye. Emetropic eye is a normal eye. And what happens, there's uh, light coming in from an object that you're looking at. And the, the goal is to focus the object right on the retina like it is here. All these light rays converging at a specific point. Um, of course, light refracts along the way, although they're not showing it here. The cornea has the most ref refractive power. There's refraction happening here. Aqueous humor, there's refraction. They're just showing us the refraction of the lens because that's what changes for near and far vision. And then it refracts again in the vitreous humor. But the point is, in a normal eye, yeah, the focus point is right on the retina. This person is nearsighted. We call that myopia. So this is a myopic eye. And you can see, where's the focus point? The focus point happens too early. The retina is back here, but the focus point occurs too soon. So that's what nearsightedness is. It says eyeball too long. That's kind of a, just another way of saying the focus point is too short. So the eye is not refracting the uh, the light enough to get it to, or actually opposite of that, the refractive power is too much that the focus point is happening too early. So there's a gap there which makes seeing uh, far uh, difficult. So you would put a corrective lens in front of your eye that will account for that difference to get the focus point back onto the retina. It's just the opposite of someone is farsighted. That's a hyperopic eye. Um, hyperopia is the condition. And here we can say, well, the focus point happened too late, right? We want the focus to be on the retina, but it's not quite there yet. It would need more space in order to focus. One way to say is eyeball too short. Another way to say it, well, the focus point took too long, right, before it uh, focused. So we would just need a correction lens to bring it back to the retina, the focus point. So there's a corrective lens, obviously a different shape than if the person was myopic, right? And that focus point gets moved up here towards the retina for correction.